morning, welcome to day seven of Vlogmas. So it's Wednesday now and the time here is about half past nine in the morning. So I've been out on the school run this morning. It was quite chilly out this morning. We all had our winter coats on and gloves and hats and everything. It's definitely getting to that time of year where we really need to wrap up on the school run. And I'm back home now and my husband's just left in the car. He's heading into the office today, which he does now maybe about once a week. And they're having their work Christmas dinner um, in the canteen today, so he wasn't going to miss that. So he's gone off and the house is all quiet. Well, I can hear in the distant background, I've got the washing machine on, but hopefully that won't come through the screen. But I thought I'd pop on and share what Elf was up to in the night, what I'm wearing and my plans for today. So I'll start off with what Elf was up to in the night. And he decided to set up a game of hopscotch um, in our lounge. So I'll pop a picture up so you can see. He used masking tape to get it all set up and then he borrowed some little numbers that we have that we use on a wooden calendar we have in our, in our kitchen. So use those the numbers. And as you can see, Elf was getting stuck into the game and there was a queue of other teddies waiting to have a go too. So my daughter made sure all the other teddies had a go. So they've all had their turn now. And the hopscotch is still down here next to me. I thought I'd leave it and wouldn't tidy it up because I might have a little play of it later when they get back from school. So that was quite nice, a little game that Elf set up. And then in terms of what I'm wearing today, well, I've got out a dress that I haven't worn this winter yet, and I don't reach for that often. It's kind of, it was right at the back of my drawer, actually, when I found it. And what I love about things like Vlogmas or any videos I do where I'm on sort of every day is it really makes me think of different things to wear just for a bit of variety to talk to you about. And it means I kind of get out things I don't wear very often and often really enjoy wearing them. And this is one of those things. It's a dress I made maybe about a year and a half ago. I think I remember making this one in the middle of summer for some reason, even though it's a really wintry dress. And I guess because it's sort of black, um, long sleeved, a bit fitted, it feels a bit formal for everyday wear, but actually it's a really, really comfy one. So it's quite a practical one to wear and I really enjoy getting it out. So that's why I'm wearing today. And this dress I made using this pattern here which is a Kyolo wrap dress by Named Clothing, which is a pattern I really, really like. I've got the old version of the pattern, which is just for the dress, but the pattern has been updated now for a larger size range and also to include a jumpsuit version too. So it's quite a versatile pattern now if you buy it. And the size range goes from now at UK4 up to UK28. So a fairly decent size range too. But it's just a really fun shape, this dress. You basically sew it like this in a sort of flying squirrel shape. And then you use these ties to sort of wrap it around you and it creates a really pretty wrap detail. I'll stand up a bit so you can see how it looks when you've tied it around. You can tie the ties at the front or the back, so it is quite versatile how you kind of finish it. And the version I made um, is yeah, a really wintry, simple version. I made it in this organic cotton jersey that I got from Minerva. I'm not sure if they've got this organic cotton jersey range in stock still. If they do have it, I'll link it down below. It's quite a nice, lightweight, stretchy cotton jersey, so it works really well for a dress. It's got a nice sort of stretch in because the dress is designed to be quite tight fitting on the arms and around the body, so it's really comfy to wear. My version of the Kyla Raptors is the old version, and it's just a sleeveless version. I think now the pattern includes sleeves, so you can make it sleeveless or with sleeves. And I ended up before they had the new version, they had a sort of free download you can add on for a sleeve extension, which I've got. So I used that to add on these sleeves and I made them full length for a nice wintry dress. And also the version I have, the neckline on the dress is either designed to be finished just by turning under the fabric itself, which I never find gives a very good result. I've tried it before and I find it just often stretches out. Or you can add a little um, sort of binding on the inside to finish the neckline, which I have done that has worked better. But I decided for this version to make my own little neckband. I'm not sure whether you can see because it's hard to see a black on the screen. I'll come a bit closer. Yeah, I made myself a little neckband because I thought that would make this dress a little bit more casual with kind of a jersey neckband on it. Um, but I think the new pattern does include a neckband option. So generally the pattern has been improved all round, um, but it's still got the cool sort of tie detail, which kind of really makes this pattern a bit unique. And for my version here, I went for... Um, a slightly longer length than I've often made in the Kyle wrap. I have made like a full length version. It's designed to be made sort of to down sort of to the ground. So I guess like a maxi dress. Um, and if you do make that maxi dress version, it's got this little slit at the back. So I made that version for a summer dress, sleeveless. But I've also made a few above the knee versions um, because that's the length I quite like to wear. But for this version, I decided to make it a little bit longer. So this one kind of sits just below my knee, 
which is another reason I guess why it feels a little bit more formal for some reason. I'll put a picture up so you can see actually the length and how it looks on me. But actually I really enjoy wearing it. It is really comfy and stretchy and yeah, it's a nice one to wear. Oh, and in terms of sizing, um, I've always made the UK size 6 based on my bust measurement. I think because the waist is huge on it, obviously, because um, it goes out in this shape. Um, it's not a fitted waist by any means. Um, it doesn't, the waist measurement's not so critical because you can pretty much pull it around to fit your waist. And again, there's quite a lot of room in the hips due to the shape as well. So I think the bust measurement's probably the most critical measurement um, on this pattern. But yeah, that is what I'm wearing today. It's really nice to get it out, actually, and it is really, really comfy, so I should really get it out more often. So the next thing I wanted to share in today's video was a couple of my knitted hats. Like I mentioned earlier, I wore a hat on the school run today, and I really love getting my knitted hats out at this time of year. And I really enjoy knitting hats, too. I find they're quite a nice, fun project. They're often great for using up leftover wool, and you can have fun with different stitches. They don't take too long to knit and they're really practical to actually wear and keep you nice and cosy too. So I thought I'd share the hat I was wearing on the school one today and the, the pattern I used to knit it. And actually this hat was a bit of a hack of a pattern, but this is the hat I wore today. It's one of my favorite knitted hats. I do have a few and I like to kind of mix up through the season. And this one I knitted using some leftover chunky yarn I had from knitting a cardigan. It's just like an acrylic yarn. It was a cardigan I knitted when I was quite new to knitting and I wasn't ready to kind of spend a bit more money on more expensive um, yarn at that point. But it works really well for a hat actually. It's nice and cosy. And I knitted this one in this moss stitch with a nice chunky ribbing bit at the bottom and added on this faux fur pom-pom that I got from a shop on Etsy that I've got a few pom-poms from. They do some really lovely whole variety of kind of sort of this sort of style animal kind of fur colours and also some sort of jolly colours like pinks and greens and that sort of thing too. Um, I'll link them down below. And the pom-poms come with these little woolen ties on so they're really easy to sort of tie into the hat. So this is how I was wearing today. It's nice and stretchy. The chunky arm works well to make it nice and cosy too. And this was a hack of a pattern that I've made before um, for hats, which is this one here. It is an all about Amy pattern. I do like her patterns. And it is the cotton candy beanie and cowl pattern. So the pattern is for this chunky cowl, which I haven't made actually. And then this chunky hat that's knitted using moss stitch, or I think she calls it seed stitch on the pattern, but I think moss stitch and seed stitch are the same thing, as far as I'm aware. Um, and it's designed to be knitted in super chunky wool. So my first version I made this pattern, I made the actual, just, just per the pattern was designed. This was when I was quite early to knitting things for myself. And I knew that Amy's patterns are quite clear to follow, so I thought it would be a good one to try. This is my original version. Again, it's got one of these nice pom-poms, faux fur pom-poms on top. And I knit this one using super chunky yarn. So it's a lot thicker than my second version, this super chunky yarn in black. And you can see the kind of, um, yeah, the moss stitch there. Um, and it was one of my, I think it was my first time knitting in the round. So that was a bit of a new thing for me. And actually the ribbing isn't the best ribbing ever on this one. Um, but yeah, um, it's turned out fine. And I still really enjoy wearing it. I like the kind of black with a grey pom-pom on top. So that was my original version. So for this version, when I found this wool left over, I thought I'd give a go of altering the pattern so I could make it in a less chunky yarn. So I sized down with the needles and then I increased the stitch count quite a bit because, yeah, to make it the similar size, which took a bit of um, a few goes really. I kind of knit up the rib stitch a few times and tried it on my head to kind of figure out um, how I could make it fit. Um, and then once I got up to the actual, the moss stitch, it was a bit easier. I just gradually decreased it to the top, a bit like the pattern. So this is my second version. So although they're made kind of roughly using the same pattern, you can see they're quite different. This one's much chunkier um, and thicker wool. This one's a bit finer, but I really enjoy wearing them both. So yeah, I thought I'd share those knitted hats. I'll pop one on so you can see what it looks like on. It is nice and cosy. I do like a big pom-pom. So yeah, those are my knitted hats. Oh, my hair's all <laughs> hat hair now. So I'll link the knitted hat pattern down below. Um, I think it's a really nice pattern and knits up really well. I generally have found the patterns I've made by All About Amy do, they do knit up really nicely and they're really clear to follow. And I think her designs are really cute too. So yeah, those are my knitted hats I wanted to share today. And then I thought I'd mention now what I'm up to this morning. I am planning on going on a walk up into town this morning. I've got a few errands to run. I want to go to the post office. I've got a couple of international Christmas cards I want to send. I'm hoping I'm not too late um, to get those out and hopefully um, to the recipients before Christmas. So fingers crossed. So I will take you on my walk into town in a moment once I've got all ready to go. And then I'll be back on later to share with you my next sewing project that I'm hopefully getting started on later today if I've got some time. So yeah, I'll see you a little bit later. Bye.
hello I'm back from town now I hope you enjoyed seeing a little bit of my walk in it's really sunny today actually very cold but sunny so it was a lovely day for a walk into town and I um, got my international Christmas cards posted picked up a few other bits I needed um, including some Christmas cards for the teachers and that sort of thing and in town I also saw a really really cute crocheted Christmas tree had been set up. It was really lovely. So I took a picture because I thought you might like to see it. I'll pop it up here. There was so much lovely detail on it. There were little crocheted snowmen and snowflakes and all sorts, as well as some crocheted presents at the bottom. It was really, really lovely. So that was nice to see and a little bit different. Often around here, um, the local um, crochet group will pop um, toppers on a lot of the letter boxes. Um, Christmassy ones. Um, we had some for the Jubilee earlier this year and then they got taken down and the Christmas ones haven't come back actually yet so I'm hoping they still will but I'm not sure if they're doing them this year or not so it was nice to see that crocheted tree anyway. So I've had some lunch and my husband's actually just arrived back from work. He had his Christmas dinner and then apparently there were so many of them in the office today for the dinner that uh, there weren't really enough desks for everybody so he decided to come home and finish off all his calls and his work here which works quite well really because it means you won't get stuck in the rush hour traffic later. So yeah, he's back a bit earlier than I was expecting. And after lunch, I decided to get on with a little bit of sewing. So I have been doing that. And um, yesterday I mentioned I was going to try and start sewing my bunting. But I didn't end up doing that. A friend texted me to ask if I fancy going for a walk before school pickup. So I went out on that walk instead. So I thought today I would get those buntings sewn up. So here are all my little bunting flags. They're all now it's sewn together and um, it was quite handy the white thread was already in my machine so I didn't have to change that which is always a winner so now I just need to sort of trim the points and then turn them the right way out and um, which I'll hopefully do on the sofa this evening so I'm pleased to progress that project and then my next plan now is to start cutting out a new project a top for me and um, which is one I've been wanting to do yeah for a few days now so it's nice to get round to it and it's using some fabric that I was gifted by Minerva in exchange for a blog post. It's this really lovely um, cotton ribnet fabric. It's quite a wide ribnet. Um, I think it's 90% cotton, 10% lycra. So it's got a really nice stretch to it, but quite a firm stretch. So I think it'll have a good recovery as well. And it's really lovely grey, sort of um, flecky grey sort of print, which I think is really pretty. And I think I've shown this fabric before. I can't remember. It might have been one, in one of my midweek chat videos. And I was saying how I was going to turn it into one of my favourite winter tops. From this book here, the stretch book, the Freya top. Um, so this one here, this really nice um, top that's quite, quite close fitting with this mock neckline. I'm going to make this version here with the long sleeves in a size two, which I always make the Freya top in. The Freya top is a really lovely pattern. It's one of my sort of tried and tested ones that... Um, I really love to make. The only downside of it is it doesn't have the biggest size range ever. It's It goes from, I think, a UK 6 up to a UK 20. But I have mentioned before in other videos that if you like the look of the Freya and want to make something similar, then the True Bias Nico top has a much bigger size range and has a really similar um, design to this version here. It isn't exactly the same as this pattern because this pattern has this sort of dress version with an A-line skirt, whereas the Nico top has a sleeveless option and a sort of longer dress with slits at the side, I think. So there are a few other different variations of the Nico top, but it has got quite a similar sort of mock neck, um, tight fitting top, sort of polar neck style top version, if you wanted to check that one out instead. But I never have just because the Freya seems to fit me quite nicely and it's a pattern I already have. So I'm looking forward to revisiting it. It's quite a simple sew and there aren't too many pattern pieces to cut out either. And actually I got my pattern piece out and it's funny because I was reminiscing about this pattern because I got this book the first Christmas after I started sewing. It was sort of on my Christmas list and I was really excited to get it. And my children were a bit smaller then. And I remember a couple of days after Christmas, my husband took them out to a park in the morning so I could get started on um, sort of tracing out some patterns in this book. So I was really excited to get going on it. And I wanted to trace out the Freya top. I must have had some fabric that I was looking forward to sewing with. So they left the house and I sort of got the pattern out ready to trace. And I couldn't find the tracing paper anywhere. I think I tidied it away um, to make room for Christmas stuff. And I just couldn't find it for the life of me. And I knew I had limited time um, with my family being out the house. So um, in the end, what I did was use some baking paper from the kitchen because I remembered hearing somewhere that baking paper was a good alternative option to tracing paper. 
So my Freya um, that I use over and over again, the pattern piece are made out of baking paper and I don't really like them much. They have a sort of stiffer, more, I don't know, they're just not, they're not, I don't like them as much as my tracing paper pattern pieces. So whenever I use them, I'm like, oh, I don't really like the feel of this. It's a bit more stiff. It just it doesn't, it doesn't sort of sit as nicely as the tracing paper I usually use. But I never bothered changing it because it takes me back to that Christmas. So I guess it always makes me feel a bit Christmassy remembering those pattern pieces and also they do work perfectly fine so I don't really need to do them again the baking paper does work fine it's just not my personal preference I usually like to use Umberda tissue paper which I've got on my Amazon list down below in case you're interested in it I just find it works really well but yeah I do think it's funny when I get out those Freya it's one of my most used um, patterns and one of the only patterns I have traced in baking paper but never mind so that is my plan with this fabric and I also um, just a moment ago went into my thread tin I've got my thread tin here it's actually quite a Christmassy tin I think my mum got me a set of three tins um because I'd asked for some tins for sewing stuff and she could only find really nice ones that were Christmassy so I really like them this is not I think I've got a couple of red ones that are even more Christmassy but this one's got a bit of a Christmassy red fleck in anyway this is my thread tin I'll show you inside it um, I've got all my threads and also my um, bobbins in this lovely prim bobbin holder, which I really like. It's sort of flexible, so it's really easy to get the bobbins in and out. And I find it's quite nice to have them organised in there. So this is my thread tin. And I think when I started sewing, I try and match the thread perfectly every single time on a new garment. And I ended up amassing quite a lot of thread. As you can see, there's still quite a lot in here. But in more recent times, when this tin got to the point where it was hard to shut the lid, I thought, no, I don't want any more thread. I'm just going to start using all of these threads up, what, what I already have. And I have found generally that even if it's not a perfect match, it generally works fine. I've got a whole range of colours in here. So I managed to find one here. It looks like a new thread, actually. So I don't know what I bought this for originally, but it matches quite nicely with the fabric. You can't really see it, I don't think, there. So that's what I'm going to use for my Freya top. It's so nice to use another thread up. Actually, I found it really satisfying going through this pot and using things up. I mean, it's really every time I've used one up entirely, I sort of feel like quite yeah happy, like I should have a little celebration. I've got a few with barely any on. I think I've kept this one, the yellow, because it goes quite well with the outside of some of my son's cub badges or something. So that's quite a handy little um, lot to have. So yeah, it's definitely going down my tin, which is good. I've got a few staples in the larger size, like the black and the white, but otherwise just lots of smaller threads that I'm gradually working my way through. So that is my plan this afternoon to start cutting into this fabric. It'll be nice to have that top made because I think it's one I'll probably use quite a lot in the winter because it will just be a real sort of staple item in this grey colour. So I will link this fabric down below as well as the stretch book and the True Bias Nico top I mentioned as well. So yeah, my plans the rest of the day are firstly cut out the Freya top and then after that I'll go and pick the children up from school and it's still lovely weather out there, the sun's still shining, so they'll probably want to go to the park after school, which I think is always a nice way to wind down after a busy day at school, get a bit of fresh air. And then we're going to come back home, hopefully write a few more Christmas cards. There's a few Christmas cards we still need to write for family that the children want to get involved with writing, so we'll hopefully do that when we get home. And then also it is the school Christmas fair on Friday, um, which is nice. I think it might be the first one since COVID, actually, um, as far as I can remember, which is really nice. The school's able to do that fundraising. So um, the plan is to bake something for the fair because they've asked for donations of sort of cakes or sweet goods. So we're going to either do some baking this evening or tomorrow evening, depending on how timings run. Um, but I'll make sure to take some pictures of our baking so you can see that either tomorrow or the day after, depending on when we do it. And then this evening, I'm going to yeah, do a bit on my bunting, get those turned the right way around so I can start attaching the bias binding. And I might see if I can squeeze a bit of knitting in too. We'll see. Sometimes I find the days fly and by the time we sit down on the sofa, it's already getting towards nine o'clock and I'm thinking of going to bed. So yeah, we'll see how today goes. But thank you so much for joining me for another day of Vlogmas. It's really lovely to have you along and I really appreciate you watching and liking the videos and commenting too. So yeah, thank you very much. And I will see you again for day eight tomorrow. So yeah, I hope you have a good day and see you tomorrow. Bye.